you know, I am trying to um, bring in the context of uh, the context to explain why we need the Arzilla Ascoli theorem, okay, uh, in our discussion, okay. So, uh, you know, the uh, as I was telling you in the last lecture, the main thing we are concerned about is compactness of families of functions, okay. So, uh, at the background is uh, we we have uh, the need to get a proof of the uh, Picard theorems, okay, and for that you have to study compactness of families of meromorphic functions, okay, and uh, we have to understand that properly, all right, and therefore you must understand compactness uh, uh, from a basic point of view. Uh, first of all, compactness. Uh, in the uh, plain topological sense, what it means for metric spaces, and then you know what it means for spaces of functions. Okay, and once you uh, know all this, then your 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 mind is now then properly in tune to understand uh, the you know the uh, the proof of uh, 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 the so-called Montel's theorem, okay, which is a key theorem that is used for. Uh, uh, going uh, for getting a proof of uh, the Picard theorems. Okay, so um, so again, you know, so le le let me tell you very briefly. Uh, let me again recall very briefly the topological background that I gave you as class. Uh, so you know, if you start with uh, if you start with the topological space, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is this notion of compactness. Okay, uh, namely, every open cover has a finite subcover. And that is a very uh, that is a very general notion all right and it can be defined for any topological space because all you need uh, in for the definition is the idea of open set uh, which is there in any topological space okay, which is fundamental to any topological space. Now but the point is that this this abstract definition of compactness is not useful all the time because it is a very uh, it is a condition that you have to check uh, for all covers for example if I want to check a topological space is compact. I have to take uh, an arbitrary cover of open sets and then I have to from that I have to show that I can pick out finitely many. That is something that is not so easy to do because it is a uh, uh, you know uh, why it is not easy to do is because a cover can be very abstract, it can be arbitrary and from something abstract it is very hard to extract something that is very specific. Okay. So, uh, so, the as usual as we do in mathematics normally you have a definition which uh, is very abstract and the reason why you like that definition is because it has got a lot of power, the abstraction gives it a lot of power. The, the abstract definition of compactness gives you a lot of power in the sense that you know it tells you that whenever you have an open cover you can always get a finite sub cover. So, it is a very powerful thing but practically it is not so useful when you want to uh, really use it in particular situations and just like this is the same situation in mathematics most of the time you have some definition uh, involving a property which is very abstract and you you make that definition because you know that property is very powerful it is a very powerful strong property which you can use. But then how do you put it uh, to use uh, then the theory tries to give equivalent conditions so that you can which are easier to verify or which are more uh, uh, handier to verify okay. So, <coughs> so in the same way uh, if you look at compactness okay, uh, then there are conditions which help you to uh, uh, verify uh, uh, compactness in a more easy way by so what are the equivalent conditions I was telling you yesterday that if you if you take a metric space. Uh, uh, then for a metric space uh, compactness is the same as uh, uh, compactness is the same as sequential compactness and that is the same as the bolzano weierstrass property okay. So, uh, so what is uh, the sequential compactness it is the property that every sequence has a convergent subsequence all right and, uh, and what is the bolzano weierstrass property the bolzano weierstrass property is that every infinite subset has a limit point okay. And uh, a, we are more used to looking at Euclidean spaces, okay, uh, Rn, uh, n dimensional real space, uh, and you can also take Cn, n dimensional complex space, we, and Cn can be thought of as R2n if you want, okay. And 
these Euclidean spaces, uh, they have the uh, property that uh, you know uh, uh, compactness there is equivalent to closeness and boundedness. Okay, and that's what we are. Uh, whenever we are doing, uh, uh, when we are, whenever we are working with Euclidean spaces, if you want to check compactness, all you will do is you will check it. Your set is bounded. You will check it is closed. Okay, and that's it. Then you know it's compact. Okay, so it's as easy. It's that easy. And mind you, <coughs> you just take, for example, uh, the uh, closed, you closed, take a closed disk <coughs> on the complex plane. Take a closed disk on the complex plane. It's easier to say that it is a closed set, and that it that it is a bounded set, and therefore it is compact. It's easier to say that than to say, than to take an arbitrary open cover and try to pick out a finite subcover. It's not easy. If I give you an arbitrary open cover of a of a closed disk, okay, on the complex plane, it's not easy to pick out uh, a finite subcover. All right. Whereas <clears throat> I can assert that this will be true because of compactness, and why? Because I can check compactness by the equivalent condition that it is both closed and bounded, which is easy for me to check. Okay. So, but of course, you know, it's very important that. Uh, uh, so this is see in all these issues, we are in the context of metric spaces. <coughs> we are not in the more general context of topological spaces because met, the metric is involved in all these things. For compact, when you define compactness, metric is not involved. Okay, but when you define sequential compactness, okay, you are worried about convergence of a sequence. Okay. And uh, uh, that is uh, easiest to define if you have a metric. Otherwise, if you don't have a metric, you have to worry about nets and things like that. Okay. And uh, uh, bolzano weierstrass property. Okay. Uh, uh, can well, in fact, it can also be defined uh, more generally. But these properties are all very easily defined when you have a distance function between two points, which is a metric. Okay. So you see. If you take, uh, 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 of course, you know. If you take a, so uh, so, what I was saying was that, you know, in all these things, uh, we are we we are working with a metric space, okay, and <coughs> and the point is that uh, 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 with a metric space space, space things are better because, uh, I mean, you can visualize a lot of things because there is a distance function, okay. Uh, so if limit, uh, if suppose you have, if you say limit x tends to x naught in a metric space, it makes sense because you are actually saying the distance between n and x and x naught is tending to zero. Okay, you, you are letting a function to tend to zero, so it makes uh, clear sense. If you you can't make so easy sense of this if you didn't have a metric. Okay, so uh, so what I want to tell you is that uh, now you know. So the point is that somehow, if you are uh, uh, working with Euclidean spaces, then uh, uh, compactness is just the same as closeness and boundedness put together okay but if you take an arbitrary topological space one way is always true if something is compact okay then it will always be uh, if if you take a subspace of a of a space of a topological space if it is compact okay uh, 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 well i should say uh, if you take an arbitrary metric space not 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 euclidean spaces okay you take an arbitrary metric space if you take a compact uh, subset, it will be closed and bounded, okay. But the converse need not be true, okay. Uh, Euclidean spaces spaces are very special, so for which closedness and boundedness implies compactness is equivalent to compactness. So the standard example is R infinity, okay. You look at all the sequences of real numbers such that the sum of the if you write out the series which consists of the sum of the squares of the moduli okay this so called square summable sequences okay in 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 modulus okay then so you know you take all the so you take all sequences x1 x2 etc xn uh, of real numbers such so that sigma mod xi squared okay you take the modulus of uh, the uh, entries of the sequence and square it and you sum it you, mind you when you sum it you are getting a series that series should converge okay the set of all these sequences they are called square summable sequences uh, the the set of all these sequences is called r infinity it's called the infinite dimensional euclidean space okay 
and in this R infinity it is a metric space okay because uh, it is very easy to define a metric using just extending the same distance formula only thing is that now you, uh, you have infinitely many coordinates the usual distance formula is what you take difference of coordinates square them <coughs> sum them up and then take square root. Now what you do is you do it for all the coordinates even though there are infinitely many coordinates this will work because I know that if you sum all the if you take the sum of the squares of all the coordinates it, it converges okay. So what will happen is that you get this R infinity and in R infinity if you take the <coughs> if you take the open uh, I mean if you take the closed ball uh, radius 1 center the origin okay you are taking all those uh, elements whose distance from the origin is less than or equal to 1 okay then what happens is that this is uh, of course closed and bounded it is a closed ball so it is closed and it is radius 1 so it is bounded but it is not compact okay because if you take the sequence uh, which consists of only once along the diagonal okay <coughs> you, you take a sequence of sequences okay which if you write down uh, one below the other so that you know you get only once along the diagonal and zeros elsewhere okay then that sequence you know it, it will it will be in this uh, 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 in this closed ball but it will never have a convergent subsequence and that is because uh, the distance between any two members of sequence is always uh, 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 a fixed positive quantity it is a constant value in fact it is it is root 2 actually okay. So you can see that uh, if the distance between two members of a sequence is a constant such a sequence cannot have a convergent subsequence because a convergent subsequence means it has to become Cauchy and distance between uh, terms should come closer become become very small okay so it cannot have a Cauchy subsequence so what it means is that you are able to get a sequence which does not have a convergent subsequence so it means it is not sequentially compact but if it is not sequentially compact it cannot be compact because there is this theorem which says that for a metric space compactness is the same as sequential compactness okay so R infinity is an example of a metric space where you uh, closedness and boundedness does not Im imply compactness okay so you are in uh, 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 this closed and bounded implies compact works for us for most of the time because we are worried about only usually we are wor worried about subsets of Euclidean space okay you are if you are working with Rn or Cn n dimensional real or complex space then you are in good shape okay. Uh, now uh, but then you know the 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 if but you take an arbitrary metric space compactness will always imply closeness and boundedness okay a compact subset will always be closed and bounded okay that will always be true compactness is always stronger or compactness will give you closeness compactness will give you boundedness but if you want to get back compactness from closeness and boundedness that will not work in an arbitrary metric space as we saw it does not work in R infinity but it will work in Rn or Cn okay. Now the truth is compactness is not only uh, that strong in fact it is far more stronger it gives you something called total boundedness and what is this total boundedness this total boundedness is as I was uh, explaining to uh, we, uh, you know last time by this diagram you can have a look at this diagram. So you see I have this space x uh, which is a metric space mind you and uh, the total boundedness is that you know you give me any positive number epsilon okay you think of it as a very small radius okay then what you can do is you can find finitely uh, many points uh, uh, points of a subset a sub epsilon called an epsilon net such that you know every point of x is within an epsilon distance from one of these points at least one of these points. So in other words if you take the if you take the open balls centered at these points these finitely many points which are the uh, elements of a epsilon the so called epsilon net uh, uh, with uh, uh, radius epsilon okay then the union of all these balls will cover the whole space. So you know it is a mind you it is you are covering the space by only finitely many uh, open balls of given radius epsilon and this will and this should work for every epsilon that is the uh, that it that is even if you make epsilon smaller you will still find uh, another finite set of points at which centered at which if you take these epsilon balls and you take the union it will still cover the whole space okay 
it is a very strong property and this will <coughs> this will of course fall through if it is compact. Why? Because you know the truth is that give me if, if the space is compact give me any epsilon and you take the collection of all balls centered at various points all possible points with radius epsilon you take all these open balls that is an open cover and because it is compact it has to have a finite subcover. So, I have found an epsilon net for every epsilon I can find an epsilon net just simply because of the very definition of compactness. So, compactness will give you total boundedness, but total boundedness uh, and of course total boundedness implies boundedness of course, because uh, you, you can check as I was telling you last class that the, uh, the diameter of the topological space uh, can be compared is always less than or equal to the diameter of the epsilon net plus 2 times epsilon. So, you, so you will get this, uh, so I, uh, I am a little short of space but let me write it here d of a is uh, d of x not d of a d of x uh, d of x is less than or equal to d of a plus 2 epsilon d of a epsilon plus 2 epsilon you will get this for every epsilon you will get this and d of a epsilon mind you is a finite quantity because it is the diameter of a finite set diameter is supposed to be supremum of uh, the distances between 2 uh, points on the set it is trying to measure how large the set is using the metric ok. So, and we put soup because sometimes the set may be unbounded and uh, in that case your uh, diameter may be infinite ok. So, uh, in any case uh, what this tells you is that uh, if, if a space is compact the if it is a metric space and it is compact you know this tells you that it is bounded because it has finite diameter all right. And, uh, and of course, I told you it, it will also be closed okay. if a subspace of a metric space is compact it will be bounded and closed of course ok. And you also get an epsilon net for every epsilon which means it is totally bounded all right and a total boundedness is a very strong condition uh, it is a very strong form of boundedness. Now, the point is that from total boundedness how do you get back compactness can you get back compactness and the theorem is that you can get back compactness with this with this extra condition ok. Suppose uh, your space is totally bounded and complete then it is compact ok. So, uh, it is a uh, you know uh, it is a it is a rather uh, powerful theorem. So, you know compactness so you know to check that something is compact it is enough to check that your metric space uh, if you have a subspace of a metric space suppose you want to check it is compact all you have to check is well now you have one more condition you check it is complete that means you check that every Cauchy sequence converges and you check that it is uh, 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 totally bounded ok. So, this is a uh, this is another thing uh, which helps and you know as far as general topological spaces are concerned things are really bad. Uh, in fact, you can have if suppose you have a general topological space which is not a metric space suppose it is not a metric space ok. Then you can have a horrible situation like this the whole space will be comp you can have a whole space which is compact not a metric space topological space the whole space is compact you can have a sub you can have a subspace which is also compact but it is not closed such a horrible thing can happen this can happen in an arbitrary topological space it cannot happen in a metric space in a metric space a compact subspace is always closed and bounded ok that is what you have to remember ok. So, so uh, well uh, now the point is that uh, so what you get is you know so let me let me continue with uh, with this discussion. Uh, so, you have compactness on on the one hand uh, and then of course, we are working with metric spaces uh, you have compactness on one hand and that is you can get that from uh, complete complete and totally bounded. And in fact, this way also is is correct because you see, uh, if a space is compact, it's of course totally bounded. I have told you, uh, if a metric space is compact, it is totally bounded. I told you it has finite diameter. In fact, and uh, di finite diameter which is comparable to the diameter of any epsilon net, okay, which exists because of total boundedness. And compactness also implies completeness because you see, uh, 
if it is compact it is sequentially compact okay. So, uh, every uh, every sequence has a convergent subsequence. So, in particular if a sequence is a Cauchy sequence if then it will have a convergent subsequence but if a Cauchy sequence has a convergent subsequence then the Cauchy sequence itself must be convergent okay. So, uh, so compactness is equivalent to complete and to totally bounded okay. Now, the problem is that you know uh, this is this is uh, what we have in general topology if we are only worried about spaces okay. Uh, not just topological spaces but we are worried about more specific uh, spaces namely metric spaces okay. But our context is different our context is we are worried about functions okay. In fact our application is you want to study meromorphic functions on a, on a domain in the external complex plane alright that is the context where we have to go to. So, somehow you know these results which are for spaces you have to translate them they are not still good enough for our use uh, you have to translate them into results for spaces of functions okay because we want to apply everything to spaces of functions. So, what spaces of functions will you think of? So, you know the uh, you know if you take if you uh, so let me recall again if x is a topological space okay then uh, uh, you know you can take this uh, uh, you can take the set of all maps from uh, x to r okay or you can take the set of all maps uh, from x to c x to the so uh, you can take the set of all real valued functions on x or you can take the set of all complex valued functions on x this is a uh, these are algebras okay. So, you see you take this uh, set of all uh, maps from the space uh, to the real line these are just maps set theoretic maps I am not assuming anything continuity nothing okay. So, just maps from x to the real line or just you take the maps from x to the complex plane okay. So, just real valued functions or complex valued functions okay. Now, that is a these are algebras algebras means that they are uh, so for example, if you take the set of all uh, uh, real valued functions that is a vector space it is a real vector space because you can add two functions you can multi uh, and and in uh, and you can multiply a function by a constant a real constant it is a real vector space. And if uh, if you think about it it is also an algebra it is a commutative ring namely there is a multiplication in it in it which is commut commutative and that is just multiplication of uh, real valued functions if you multiply two real valued functions point wise you get a again an, another real valued function. So, this is a ring it is a commutative ring with which has a vector space structure and the vector space structure is compatible with the ring structure uh, multiplication distributes over addition in the right sense okay and so on and therefore, this is a nice ring it is a ring plus a vector space such a thing is called an algebra. So, I have to I have mentioned this before in one of the earlier lectures. So, this is a this is uh, the set of all maps from x to r is a real algebra the set of all maps from x to c is a complex uh, algebra okay. And uh, the point is that uh, if you are looking at uh, among these maps if you look at only uh, bounded maps okay you look at maps whose images are bounded okay. Uh, in the image I can talk about boundedness because the image is going to lie either in R or in C. If you take a if you take a fun real valued function the image is going to be a subset of R if you take a complex valued function the image is going to be a subset of C okay. So, the images make sense and uh, uh, subsets of R or C and therefore, boundedness of the image makes sense. Therefore, see what I can do is I can look at uh, so let me write this if I take the bounded maps from x to R or if I take the bounded maps from x to C what will happen is that this is uh, this is a subset of this okay in, uh, in all these uh, up to this point you know I do not even need x to be a topological space x could have even been a non empty set I mean even the topology on x I am not going to use I have not used okay because I, I will worry about the topology on x if for example, I am looking at something uh, connected with uh, maps which are which are which are connected with uh, the topology namely continuous maps okay. But I am just looking at maps so x could need not even be a you know uh, a topological space in fact I can just say okay, let me I can just rub this and say x is just a non empty set. So, I get these two algebras and I get these uh, these subsets of bounded maps okay. Now, these bounded maps also if you if you check they also form sub algebras okay because sum of two bounded maps is bounded product of two bounded maps is bounded and so on. 
So, these will give you sub algebras and the beautiful thing is that the boundedness allows you to define a norm, this the so called supremum norm. Okay. So, what you can do is that you can define norm f to be supremum over x small x in capital X mod f x for for f in for f a bounded map. Okay. I can define this supremum norm. All right, and the point is that this is a norm. Once it's a norm, uh, it's a norm on a vector space, so it's a it becomes a normed linear space. And uh, once you have a normed linear space, the norm induces a distance function. All right, so you get a metric space. You get the metric induced by the norm. And once you have a met, uh, once you have this metric, you have a topology induced by the metric. So these become very nice topological spaces. In fact, they become Banach spaces. Okay, they become Banach algebras. They they become complete normed linear spaces, and the completeness is just because of the completeness of the target. It's because of completeness of real line, completeness of complex numbers. Okay, so what you get is that you get these two. Even for a non-empty set, you get these be two beautiful Banach spaces, Banach algebras. All right, one is a real Banach algebra, the other is a complex Banach algebra. Depending on whether you are considering real valid functions or complex valid functions. Now, what you can do is now you put one more. Uh, uh, so, so let me write that the distance between f and g is is just norm of f minus g. I can I can define this is the this is the metric defined by the norm, right? And now we are in a nice metric space now, okay? And now what you can now what happens is that you know if if x is topological space. Then you can go one step down and then look at the set of all continuous functions from uh, continuous bounded functions from x to r or you can look at the set of all continuous bounded functions from x to c. Okay. Then what happens is that this you can check that the set of all continuous functions uh, 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 that subset is a closed subset. The reason is because if you take a sequence of uh, if you take a sequence of continuous functions if it converges to a limit function the convergence here will correspond to uniform convergence because of the soup norm and you know a continuous a uniform limit of continuous functions is continuous therefore what it means is that if you take a sequence of continuous bounded uh, continuous functions okay and if it uh, uh, if it is a cauchy sequence okay then uh, you know it will converge in the whole space because the whole space is of course complete mind you it's a banach algebra the whole space is complete but the limit will also be continuous because it's a uniform limit and why it is a uniform limit is because of the soup norm if you check okay therefore the space of all continuous real valued functions bounded real valued function cxr or the space of all continuous bounded uh, complex valued function cxc that's a closed uh, it's a closed sub it's a closed uh, uh, subset and you know a closed subset of a complete space is again complete therefore the cxr and cxc are very beautiful uh, Banach algebras also, they are Banach sub algebras, close sub algebras. Okay. And uh, now the point is suppose you are, uh, uh, so now you know you are come into, now slowly you know we have come into uh, discussing uh, uh, spaces of functions. Okay. Now you know I would like to do topology on uh, a subset of, uh, of this. So I would like to uh, look at a space of uh, or a family or a subset or a collection of let us say continuous real valued functions and on that set consider it as a set A subset A of CXR okay, I want to do topology on that and what kind of topology I am interested in compactness. So the question is suppose I start with an A here or here the question is when is A compact this is my question. You see, because my aim is what? My aim is to study compactness of spaces of functions. You know, and, and my mind you, let me again keep reminding you so that you do not get lost. Our final aim is to study compactness of a family of meromorphic functions. Okay. So, I am trying to do it in the simplest case, in the case of just say topological, uh, in the topological case of just continuous functions, continuous real valued bounded functions. Okay. Now, when is A compact? If you see, by whatever I told you to, because A is anyway a subset of a metric space alright 
since A is a subset of a metric space, uh, to check A is compact, I can check, of course, I can check the usual definition of compactness that every open cover has a finite sub subcover, that is highly impractical, okay. Then I can check sequential compactness, I can check that, you know, every, uh, uh, every sequence in A has a convergent subsequence, right. That is another thing that I can check. The, the third thing is I can check uh, that A has the Bolzano of stress property because these are all the characterizations of compactness on a metric space, okay. Um, and you know of all the three, one possible thing that I can check uh, for A uh, is uh, that it is sequentially compact, okay. I can, so uh, I can check that if you give me any sequence in A, you give me a sequence of functions in A, if I can check that there is a conversion subsequence, then also I will get compactness, okay. So that is something that is, uh, I have, but, but mind you, if I have to check that I, this, this sequence in A converges to, it has a convergent subsequence, uh, mind you the convergence is now uniform convergence because you are under the soup norm, I have to check uniform convergence, okay, that is what it means, alright. So that is one thing I can do. What other things can I do? I just now told you that for metric space as I, uh, for metric spaces as I have written above, compactness is the same as completeness and total boundedness. So I can check that A is complete and uh, totally bounded. But you know, com mind you, uh, uh, I, I told you a compact subspace of a metric space is always closed and bounded, okay. The converse need not be true, okay, as I have told in the case of R infinity, okay. So if A, if you expect A to be compact, A should at least be closed, that is a necessary condition, okay. So, so that is always there, A has to be closed. This, this you cannot avoid, so you, you must have closeness, alright. And what this means is that therefore if you check that there is a, if you, so, so if you want to check sequential compactness in A, it is enough to check that every sequence has a Cauchy subsequence, that is enough. Because if you check it has a Cauchy subsequence, then it means it has a the conversion subsequence and the limit will also be in A because it is closed, right. So uh, A has to be closed, you cannot avoid that. And what does this thing that I have written on top tell you? Uh, to check that it is uh, compact, I have to, of course, uh, it has to be closed. I have to check that it is complete and totally bounded, okay. And the point is completeness is automatic. Why? Because A is already a closed subspace of a complete metric space, so it is automatically complete. So the only thing I have to check is uh, totally boundedness, total boundedness. So, so A is compact. Uh, uh, so, so let me write it here, uh, A compact uh, if and only if A is totally bounded, okay, this is what you get, this is what you get. Mind you of course, A, A is closed, that is already, a, uh, you already assume A is closed, because if it is not closed, you cannot expect compactness, okay. So we have ended up at this point, we have ended up at this point where you are saying, so, so finally what does all this translate to? Give me a bunch of functions, real valued continuous bounded functions on a space, alright. How do I check that, that, that as topologically it is compact, how do I check it is compact? So uh, this tells me check it is totally bounded, okay. Now what does that mean? It means that you have to find an epsilon net for every epsilon. What does that mean? It means given an epsilon positive. I have to find finitely many functions from this family such that the distance of any other function from uh, at least one of these functions, these finitely many functions is less than epsilon. That is what epsilon net means, okay. So I have to pick given an epsilon greater than 0, I have to find finitely many functions from uh, A such that the epsilon open, uh, open balls at those centered at those finitely many functions with the radius epsilon that covers A that is what an epsilon net for A means, okay. And you see this is also very abstract, you see it is very, very abstract. It is, uh, if you, if I start with an abstract family of functions, usually families of functions are abstract because you know they will depend on some property. I might have functions which have some differentiable property or some, 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 they may be defined by some abstract property. 
and from an abstract collection is it is not so easy to pick out uh, finitely many it, it may not be so easy to do it. So this total boundedness checking this total boundedness for a family of functions does not work okay. So what comes to help us here is something that can really be checked for families of functions and that is the Ascoli, Arzira Ascoli theorem so let me write that down. So the, the uh, so, so this is uh, this so let me write this this is not practical this is not practical by that I mean this is not easily verifiable in practice okay you cannot demonstrate it in practice so easily okay. So what comes to our help is the so called Arzela Ascoli theorem. Uh, uh, so what is that so let me write that down uh, so here is the Arzela Ascoli theorem. And what does this theorem say? It says that uh, suppose X is compact, X is a compact metric space, you assume you are working on a compact metric space, okay. The advantage of working on a compact metric space is that uh, automatically all continuous functions are bounded, okay. Any continuous function on a compact, any continuous real valued function on a compact uh, uh, set is you know uh, it is bounded it attains its bounds is uniformly continuous you know all these things. So if you are working with a compact space then you do not have to restrict to bounded continuous functions every continuous is aut every continuous function is automatically bounded okay. So you work with a compact metric space okay uh, then a closed subset A of uh, C X R or CXC uh, is uh, is compact if and only if it is bounded and equicontinuous okay. So this is uh, this is uh, restate this is a much more easier thing to verify in principle. So what you do see what we had above is that to check A is compact you have to check it is totally bounded and totally bounded is not practical. But checking it is bounded that is more practical see checking uh, the function this checking a family of uh, functions or a collection of functions is bounded uh, is a very easy thing because you have to check that there is a bound for all the there is a common bound for all the functions and mind you it is a uniform it is a it will be a uniform or common bound because your uh, the, the metric you are working with is induced by the norm and the norm is a soup norm. So when you say it is bounded you mean bounded in the soup norm and that means it is uniformly bounded. So that means you must find a single positive constant such that mod fx is always less than or equal to that co positive constant for all f in A and for all x in x. You must find a uniform bound that is why this is sometimes called a uniform boundedness principle okay. Also Arzilla Ascoli theorem is sometimes called the uniform boundedness principle. So what you do is instead of checking the set of uh, functions is uh, totally bounded what you do uh, you just check that there is a uniform bound find a bound for all the functions in your family which will work at once for all the functions in a family that is one thing that you have to check okay that is much more practically easy easier and the other thing is you have to check this so called equicontinuity uh, and what is this equicontinuity the equicontinuity is a very very simple thing what it says is that uh, no matter what points you choose okay the moment uh, uh, you decrease the distance between points then the, dis the, the distance between the function values will decrease no matter what function you choose in your family it will work for all so you know usual definition of continuity is you give given an epsilon you find a delta okay now that epsilon uh, uh, given an epsilon the delta will depend on the point at which you are checking continuity and it will also depend on the epsilon but what you want is you want given an epsilon you want a delta which works for any two points uh, it which works for any point and for any function at the same time in your family that is equicontinuity as given an epsilon you find a delta which works for every function in your family and for all points in one go 
that is equicontinuity and this is also something it is a property of fun continuous functions so it can be checked unlike total boundedness where you have to pick up some uh, finitely many functions explicitly which is not so easy okay. So that is why the arzela ascoli theorem is a very useful uh, tool to check compactness of a family of functions okay and this is what you get from topology. Now what we will do in the next lecture is that we will I will tell you we will we'll try to understand how you can translate this to our situation where we are working with analytic functions and meromorphic functions you have to translate this okay. So I will stop here.